All right, everyone, welcome back to another video. Last time we left off with the new uh, Guinea jungle conquered by Yanks and Aussies. We're now on to Natives Aid the Allies in the New Guinea Jungles. September 1942. War in the jungle. On the world's toughest battlefront, Australian and American forces maintained the progress in New Guinea jungle throughout September and October. By October 28th, the Australians had overcome the determined Japanese resistance in the Alola area, in the just south of Kokodoa. After five weeks of fighting, Kokodoa was retaken on November 2nd. Thus, the enemy lost their last foothold on the Buna side of the Owen Stanley Mountain. The Australians proved superb jungle fighters in a country of almost trackless bush, where natives acted on, as carriers for supplies. Natives are seen crossing a jungle torrent. I mean, yeah, if you can get the natives to help you, you know, if they want to, obviously, you don't force them to, but the natives know this land better than any anyone could ever, anyone else could, so your trackers, things like that, they wouldn't know this land like the natives. The natives, they live here. This is their home. They understand this very well. U.S. Marines, hold on in the Solomons. September 1942. Battle of the Solomons. The reconquest of the Solomons by U.S. Marines, which began on August 7th, involved hard fighting. Fierce resistance was encountered on Guadalcanal, where the trapped Japanese forces fought to the last man. On September 8th, or, that's my bad, September 3rd, um, Marines attacked enemy landing parties in the southeast of the group, and U.S. bombers scored hits on several ships. On September 9th and 12th, strong Japanese air formations raided Tulagi and Guadalcanal, destroying 20 Allied planes. Despite these air attacks, the Marines strengthened their position, above an American patrol carrying wounded back to the jungle base. Yeah, the Aussies, as mentioned in the previous one, kind of, and the U.S. Marines uh, do very good here in Guadalcanal and many of these islands. Uh, it is hard fighting because the Japanese are an enemy, kind of unlike the German. Um, the Japanese never give up. They will fight to the last. Um, that's why later they have the kamikaze pilots and things of that nature, because they just don't give up. Because in their culture, it's considered very... It was um, considered very dishonorable. So, Yankee surprise for the Japanese on New Guinea. September 1942. Landings of paratroopers. A view of a paratrooper landing back on the foe oh yeah a, a view of the of a paratrooper landing back of the enemies of the foes lines my bad on new guinea below and to the right of the leading plane may be seen several parachutes in various stages of opening swinging men at extreme angles and very close to the ground the paratroopers, with their surprise tactics, played an important part in the retaking of New Guinea soil from the Japanese invaders. Yeah, I mean, paratroopers play a big part in this war just overall. Uh, it allows you to get in places where maybe the ground troops just can't get quite yet. Uh, it'll play a big part in Europe when they're fighting uh, the Germans. Uh... But it plays a big part here, too, because, you know, get behind the enemy and then pincer them, basically. So the enemy's fighting one pr direction, and then you have enemies from behind, and you can overwhelm an enemy pretty easily that way. Um, it's not always the case, but a lot of the times it is. I mean, actually, before I move on, some of the best commanders in history, that's all they did. They just did an, uh, basically encircling tactics, which is what this would be. And, I mean, Hannibal, uh, Hannibal Barca is famous um, for defeating the Romans, and that's really what he did. He just got behind them, which most people didn't do at the time. But, yeah. Just making sure. 
the aircraft carrier Wasp goes down in the Coral Sea. September 15th, 1942. Sinking of the Wasp. On September 15th, the 14,700-ton U.S. aircraft carrier Wasp was attacked and sunk by a Japanese submarine in the Coral Sea. Although its loss was not announced officially until October 26th, at the time, the ship was ex uh, escorting a large supply convoy bound for Guadalcanal in the Solomon Islands, which, however, reached the port safely. Soon after the aircraft carrier had been hit by three of the enemy torpedoes, she went down in an inferno of flame and smoke. 90% of the ship's crew managed to get away. Uh and were later picked up by escort vessels of the U.S. Navy. This remarkable picture, taken from the deck of one of the ships in the convoy, shows dense clouds of smoke billowing from the abandoned aircraft carrier just before she went down. The Wasp, which was launched in 1939, had a proud record of war service. She earned much renown earlier in the year for her ferrying of reinforcements to Malta, marking many voyages through the hazardous part of the Mediterranean. Yeah. Um, we don't like, we do talk about kind of U S ships going down, but a lot of the time the allies shipping it not mentioned as much when it went down, but yeah, uh, you know, things like this, like the wasp and things like that, they're not really remembered as much today, but we should remember them because they did do, honorable service they did do a lot for the uh, for the soldiers in this war on both sides um navy the naval power really decides a lot of this war think if the germans had better naval power or the italians navy was actually more effective um the british maybe couldn't hold north africa if you if they can't be supplied by sea then they couldn't have held it or if they couldn't maybe have been supplied by the Americans or things like that. You know, um, a lot of times we kind of overlook the importance of Navy in this war. It really does decide it. Navy and aircraft play a huge role in this war. Um, Navy has, the navies have always played big roles. Navies have been important since, people, well, since basically the uh, age of exploration, really. Um, even before then, navies were important, but... Uh, big navies like this, you know, they decide battles. We don't think of it that way usually because we think, oh, well, the land fighting, yes. Oh, that supply, the land fighting just doesn't happen like you think it would. From the halls of Montezuma to the shores of Guadalcanal, September 1942. They use that again. Interesting. On to Guadalcanal. Looking from the air like a uh, zigzag line, a zigzagging squadron of water bugs, troops carrying uh, barges. What? Troop carrying barges carry U.S. Marine reinforcements to the beach of Florida Island during one of the stages of the Battle of the Solomons. The Marines seized beachheads on both Florida and Guadalcanal and occupied Tulagi. Heavy Japanese opposition was encountered on Guadalcanal, and during August and September, the enemy at night continued to land small contingents of troops at distant spots of, at Guadalcanal. During all this period, the Japanese were well aware that American positions uh, that, uh, that the American position was little more than a beachhead some six to seven miles long and three miles deep. The western boundary being the Matani Kau River and the eastern boundary Henderson Field. However, early in October, the Marines started another offensive west across the uh, Mati Mati Kau River, which they succeeded in crossing and also cleared out a Japanese bridgehead a few days later. But it was not until early in 1943 that the Japanese ended all opposition to an American occupation of the Solomons. Yeah, um, the Japanese fight tooth and nail to stop the Allies here, um, but they just they just can't. Uh, the U.S. troops overwhelm them with 
um, aircraft, things like that. Um, there are also just more Americans. I mean, there's all Americans and Aussies here, so there's a lot more soldiers fighting too. And so the Japanese just get overwhelmed. They can't fight this force as effectively as they would like to. Um, so they kind of just lose ground and lose ground and lose ground and then eventually just lose the island. And that, that kind of is what happens with many of the islands. They fight tooth and nail to slow them down, but at the end of the day, the outcome of the the battle really was already decided when they landed and they were able to land. So, But that's going to do it for this video. If you guys liked the video, leave a like. If you didn't, leave a comment. Tell me what I can improve on. I always appreciate your feedback. Uh, and as always, subscribe. It really does help out the channel. Thank you.